All right, this is the next part of that uh, updating the bathroom video that I'm doing. And this is uh, building a new vanity top. Um, basically, I have these uh, slabs of cherry that I had cut. Well, they cut the tree down in my backyard probably 12 years ago. And they were all sawn up and uh, been sitting there drying. And it's uh, over two inches thick these slabs and you know I've been saving them for this project and you can see they did uh, they were cut around the pith and they do have some shrinkage and stuff from when they dried first I had to fix that band saw and I took it all apart and it turned out that the um, there was real bad corrosion on the coil lug of the relay there that made it so that it wasn't making contact I took that all apart uh, took the, re the contactor out cleaned it Cleaned up the terminal, put it back, and it's working. Actually, I looked for a, um, a motor starter with overload protection for this, but it seems that all the three horsepower ones are rated at 18 to 22 amps. And this saw only draws 12, so it's really not a true three horsepower as they advertise it. But anyhow, I'm just starting by trying to break these uh, slabs down into pieces that are sized so I can get them on my joiner and start flattening and straightening them. So I'm just using the band. I find the band saw is easiest for that. And just trying, just cutting around the pith and trying to take that out of there. And the next thing to do is go over to the joiner and get one side that's nice and flat on them. And that did take a couple passes because as you saw before they were a little bit you know, cupped and a little bit um, twisted down the length. So this is really a, um, you really have to make sure that you get a nice perfectly flat surface here for the whole uh, outcome of this project. So I just took my time and, you know, the uh, that uh, spiral head really doesn't cut. You really got to put a lot of force on it when you're trying to do wide boards like this. So just go slow and take thin cuts and it you know comes out okay there's the first one there and then on to the next one and another thing you have to watch when you're dealing with boards like this that have character in them uh, how much you take off because if you go too deep you can start changing the whole look of them and then it's over to the planer and I'm just trying to get them all down to um, kind of like the, the maximum thickness that they all can be and you know have perfectly flat faces on both sides so I just ran them all through the planer did a couple passes until I um, you know made sure they all had all the sections on them were playing there and now I have two you know perfectly parallel edge faces on these boards and you can see they're still Still a lot of cracks and stuff, but I'm going to worry about, you know, working around them later. And, you know, there they are, the first step of this. So, they're still a little bit thick for what I want. Um, I want them to be about 1 and 5 eighths, about the same thickness as the countertop was. So, I'm just going to start by... Going back and taking one of the edges there and just running that on the joiner to get that perpendicular to the other sides. And at this point you can see the dust collector bag doesn't have very much big stuff in it. And from that little bit of, you know, lumber, the can is actually full. But when I go back and clean out the filter, shake that out, you can see that the that uh, cyclone really doesn't work that good. The fine stuff all went through it. So now I'm just going to go over to the band saw and I'm going to resaw pretty much about a half inch off of each of these uh, boards. And you just, you know, you just have to take your time and go slow. I don't really have a uh, good resaw blade on it. This is just a, you know, standard 5 8 inch blade, but it does do a good job if you uh, go nice and slow. Take your time. The same thing, um, all four boards have to be sawn down. And what I plan on doing is uh, taking this material here that I'm removing and using that on the side of the vanity so everything matches when you look at it. 
that just takes a couple minutes and there you can see it's you know it's pretty smooth when you get done could be better if I had a better blade but you know I'm happy with that and the good thing you can see is I'm sawing this uh, nothing is moving that that plank that I'm removing is staying perfectly um, straight and even with you know what I'm cutting it off of so that means that there's really little to no stress in this lumber which is a good thing to help keep everything flat sometimes you'll uh, get a piece that wasn't dried properly or just dried with stress in it and they'll start curling away and stuff like that so now I'm just going back over to the planer with these boards and I'm gonna bring them all down to the uh, 1 and 5 8 inch dimension and you know that wixy little wixy readout that I have on there really has been a, a great helper um, you know you know what it's gonna be just by looking at that setting that and it's still running on the original calibration and battery so that's pretty amazing and now I'm just gonna go back over and just re-hit that one side to make sure I've got a perfectly you know straight side to start out with before I start cutting these up into smaller pieces So, you know, pretty much there's, uh, there's the start of the vanity and I'm going to just start seeing, it's going to be a real close call getting, getting this top out of it, but I'm just going to start cutting these up and I'm actually going to uh, work around the opening in the center for the sink just to save material and have enough to finish it. I'm using that little evolution saw for cutting these and that does a good job. It's it's not really a you know glass smooth cut or anything, but you can see it goes right through thick boards like this with no problem. Does a decent job. And there they are, all the pieces kind of set together. You can see each and every one of them has to have the uh, bad spots trimmed out of them and stuff for the final sizing. But you know I did come out with just enough and. So now it's time to, before you really start doing the final cuts, is tr go back and true everything up. And that little uh, square that I got from Amazon, that thing's been a, you know, a real great thing to have for that. So once you know everything's going to be cutting perfectly square, it's time to, you know, start ripping things down and bringing them down to size. And you can see I've got the guard off here just for getting the video, but you really should have the guard on, you know, doing stuff like this. So now it comes to the part where I'm trying to, to size these blocks all down to uh, take any little cracks or, you know, defects or anything that I don't want in the final top out. So each one is going to be a little different size. So that works out to be a little bit of fun. And there it is. I got my top and then I got some firewood out of that, those planks. So, you know, it worked out just perfect. And you can see the pieces all have to be glued up yet, but they... They do go together fairly well, and I did get a little bit of character in the back there that I was looking for also. So now it's time to bring the sink down and start to uh, put the shape on uh, the front board there for the top. And all I did is I put the sink in place exactly where it was going to be, located that, and then just took a uh, spacer board there to offset that and get the exact same radius on the front of the cabinet. So it all matches up in the end. And I'm not running that radius all the way to the ends. I'm just stopping it on each side of the sink and then going out straight. So I got that all marked up. What has to be cut. And uh, time to head back over to the bandsaw. And I, as I said, I've got a 5 8 blade on there. And I didn't feel like, you know, changing that or anything. So I'm just going to hack away at this a little bit at a time until I get down to the that line that I just drew on there and I'll just leave the make sure I leave the line on a little bit so I can sand it off next that so does take a, a little bit of time you know a couple cuts to to get it all done and you can see it's it's far from perfect but as long as I stay outside the line I can fix that next step and that's over to this jet sander here. 
and this has really been a great addition to the shop for especially for things like this where you want to go back and blend in radiuses or you know even up drawer ends or stuff like that it really does work great and um, had zero problems with it so far you can see on one side I had to swing back the dust hood so you know you don't catch much much of the dust like this but sometimes you got to do what you got to do I'm just working on blending those radiuses in as good as I can first and kind of making sure I don't hit the ends and then I had to go back and put that little table on the end there and take the guard off completely so I could get in there and uh, straighten out those those two tails on the end there and get my three inch radius sanded into the corner there so basically there it is um, that's all sanded roughly ready to go and kind of getting ready to biscuit everything together so I put my reference lines on everything for where I wanted the biscuits to go and I'm just putting two biscuits in each joint uh, they're probably not required in a glue up of lumber this thick but I find it easier to use them just because they make sure that you have a perfect alignment of the faces of the uh, all the boards when you put them together and that makes the sanding go much quicker later so it just takes a with that you know that little DeWalt tool I've used that for years now without a problem and it just takes a little bit of time and um, you know I think it does save you a lot of time later. So everything's basically got the biscuits cut in it now and I'm gonna I decided I was gonna glue it up in two halves so basically I started with the uh, the front half of it and plying glue and that, that little glue bot that thing's um, I've really enjoyed that that's really great for glue ups and stuff had zero problems with it so that's you know still working good and I'm just gonna apply glue to all the surfaces and put them together now this is the uh, the tight bond three and um, one of the things is you don't have a lot of time to work with this and that's why I decided to do it in two separate glue ups because if uh, the glue starts getting tacky on those biscuits it can uh, you know be tough to pull it pull it straight later I just sped this up a little bit here so you know it wouldn't bore you to death and there you can see same thing on each and every piece a little bit of glue a little bit of biscuits and uh, pull it all together and just gonna use some bar clamps to you know snug everything down and make sure everything's perfectly flat there and then clean off the extra glue I took a two-hour nap came back down and time to take the clamps off and glue up the other half of it now so pretty much it's just a, a mirror image of the other side what I did and here again you see how that little glue bot makes it easy to you know get at any surface no matter which way it's aimed and not have to worry about you know trying to squeeze the glue out the bottom of the bottle You can pretty much see there how the um, that first piece, all the edges came out perfectly flush with the biscuits. Now I use this tight bond on everything basically, and uh, the good thing about it is that should help out here is it's supposed to be water resistant, if not waterproof. But um, you know that should help seeing how this is going to be a vanity top. And then it's time to just put the clamps on and I, I put the four of them on the top to start out with but then eventually I wound up having to flip by the two inside ones to the bottom to get the top to, to be perfectly flat. So I have one set on the top and one on the bottom and um, that pulled it you know really perfectly flat and that's where all that you know preparing in the beginning and setting up the tools right really makes a big difference in the end. I got that glued up, clean that up and still have these uh this little bit of character left in it well that one is mostly going to be hidden but this one here i i'm going to have showing so i just got some uh epoxy cement five minute epoxy i'm going to fill it with just to have a flush level to finish and see it get this stuff gets pretty thick it's uh, it's only like about 64 degrees in my shop now so stuff gets cold and you really got to squeeze on it to get it to mix up but it still does dry 
fine once it's uh, mixed up. You can feel the heat that it generates. So a drop of each each epoxy the same size and just mix it up. And I saved a bunch of these uh, little drawers from those old plastic cabinets that I tossed, and they make really good glue mixing uh, bins. And I just take strips of credit card to use for the uh, the little mixers there. Take old gift cards and credit cards, and they work good too. So I'm just going to top off these uh, these couple of uh, gaps here and leave it raised a little bit because it's going to shrink some when it hardens. And that'll pretty much take care of the uh, the problems here. And another nice thing about that uh, table saw cover I've got is when you get done gluing like this, you always have you know piles of glue left on it, and a chisel will clean that right off. And then it's uh, time to go back and just start doing the uh, the first sanding on this top. And real happy with the results. Everything, uh, you know, nice, flush, smooth, and uh, looks like it's going to be a, um, you know, a good, a nice piece for a top. It's time to start cleaning up the edges. And uh, it's nice having those trays with the router bits so you can just grab what you want and bring it to where you're working. And I'm just using the old Bosch router here for trimming the edge. And I've got a, uh, a long bearing piloted trim bit on there. And I clamped a straight piece of plywood on the other side there. And I'm just going to trim this one side so that it's actually uh, square and flush all the way across. Now I left about 3 sixteenths of an inch extra for, you know, misalignment. And this is what I'm going to, I'm trimming down now. I got that done, and notice I stopped short of going breaking out so I wouldn't have any tear out on there. And then I've got these templates that I made for different radiuses, and this is a three inch plywood radius template. And I was going to clamp that on the corner there and flip it over and go back and remove that corner now. And as you hold the router tight down on that top surface, you get a perfect radius. It does take a little while to to cut away that material because you're removing a lot but I find this way works best for me so there it is just just about perfect uh, one little spot it tries to walk away on you sometimes and there it is so now I took it up into the bathroom and I set up some saw horses and paint cans and strips of wood until I got it at the exact height that's going to be at. And this way I can go back and scribe the other side to match the wall. Sheetrock walls are never really perfect. So you you know you kind of want a halfway decent looking fit if you're not going to put a molding on there. So I just took a couple different thickness pieces of wood to to finally, you know, come come up with one that would take the least amount off and uh, yet fill all the gaps that I was scribing around. So you can see it's up to about a half inch off in the back there. So now, same thing. I took a straight edge on the back side and I kind of averaged it on the the worst uh, part because that's not a real straight line. And then I kind of went back and sanded down to the line in between it a little bit. So this is just the same thing, that same flush piloted bit. And um, you can see I've got a, a backup piece glued on this uh, back surface. Well, actually, it's the front, the closest surface that you see in the video. Just so when you break out the back right there, you don't have uh, any kind of splintering or anything. And that's it right there. So it does take a, a couple passes to get it down, especially when you're moving a half inch material. And it doesn't make quite a bit of mess by the time you're done. But there it is back up there, and you can see it's pretty much just about a perfect fit now. And then I thought I'd show you the hardware that we chose for in there and mounting it, because I know some people always have questions about, you know, little things like this, trying to get hardware mounted and stuff, so... We chose this um, Elevate series of, it's actually Gat, Gatco, and an Elevate series, that's a um, polished chrome series, and it's just kind of a very simple oval and square
pattern on all the pieces that I really liked. Um, and it does, it did come, everything came packaged well, and I wound up getting it off of Amazon, so that was pretty amazing. And it came with all the hardware that you need for mounting each piece and, uh, you know, packaged well. And it's all hand-polished chrome. Comes with a five-year guarantee on the finish and a lifetime guarantee on the fixture itself. But you can see they're really just, you know, really simple lines. And uh, I think they'll look good in here. So that was the uh, toilet paper holder. And this is just a single robe hook for over by the shower. Same thing, it comes with all the hardware that you need. And everything's well packaged and, uh, you know, well polished, perfect finish on it. And then here's a the little hand towel holder, and we went with this one. There's a couple different ones you can go with on this series, so, um, you know, same thing. Looks to be well made and uh, well packaged, and all the hardware comes with it, and pretty much flawless out of the box, so. I'm happy with it. And then the towel bar, same thing, except for it's, it's kind of hard to find a 30-inch towel bar these days. And this one's actually, um, you know, was available in the 30-inch size. It, you know, it wasn't exactly the cheapest thing that you can buy. But um, to get two full-size bath towels on it, you really need that. And then they all mount pretty much like this. Here's a little clip that... Uh, some pocket cast into the base and this little clip locks it in with a set screw so for the the first towel bar it's going back over where the old one was and I I wound up uh, sizing locating it so that I could put the one side of it here on a stud and I didn't use the hardware that they gave I used some uh, inch and a half Craig screws instead I like working with the square heads if I can and I put some masking tape on the wall and took the stud finder and, you know, got the center of the stud there. And um, pretty much this side here is, a, you know, a real simple install because it's going right into the stud. And there's two screws. You could actually put three screws in each bracket if you want, but I don't think you need them. I got that side in and just took a level to mount the... To, locate the uh, center line of the other bracket and then I just had to measure the distance in between the uh, the two brackets there and then I just actually poked a hole in the center so I'd know exactly where it was and I could set line up the bracket right on it mark the holes for the uh, the wall inserts now the kit came with two uh, like nylon inserts. You had to drill five sixteenths holes for these inserts, and so the holes that I marked before, I just drilled through them. And these little inserts, the uh, tabs fold over and they push through the wall like that, and then they do open up on the other side. Got them in. I so I take a hammer and right there I put a nice little ding in the wall above it that. Luckily, most of that's covered with the bracket. And then you get these things to open up on the other side. They give you a little red thing that you put in there. You tap it until it pops open. And then you know it's locked in the wall good. And I think they're made for half-inch sheetrock only. And then it does come with these screws to go with them. The mating screws. So I just, you know, basically use the, those screws and put them in there and just uh, snug them down good. And try to bar and make sure everything's right before you get too far. And at this point, there's a couple little set screws that go up in the bottom. These screws always go to the bottom so that they're hidden. And you make sure that the bracket is mounted that way too. So the little mating notch is on the bottom. And they do have Loctite on them, which makes them quite stiff to get started here. So I'm just going to start them where I've got room to turn the wrench away from the wall. And take each of them and just drive them until I, you know, just see them flush with the outside there. Then they just drop on the brackets and you go back and you tighten them up from the bottom. 
Yeah, it is a little stiff, like I said, with the uh, Loctite on them, but they lock in there nice and tight and then just wipe off all my grubby fingerprints. And there you can see this 30 inch bar was just perfect for the two bath sheets without having to triple fold them. And that way they kind of stay fresher and drier, I think. And then there's a wall robe hook on the wall. But again, I located this one on the stud just to, you know, have not have to use those brackets and um, make know that it's really going to be mounted on there good. And same thing, just uh, I use two of the Craig screws again. I know that they really do hold good and have good pull out when you use the coarse ones in a 2x4. That down and exact same mounting. Uh, they're all the same backing plate, I think, with the same mounting. You just get the screw started in there, set it over, kind of eyeball it as level and go back and just uh, give that screw a final tightening. Basically, when you get done, you really don't don't even notice that little uh, the little hole for that set screw. Then for the uh, TP holder, we had a locate in a comfortable position, so I had the boss uh, locate a position that I chose. She liked it, so now it's time to do the same thing. And you know, luckily I had studs right there available too, because this thing's gonna really need to be screwed to something good because if you put pressure on it later or you you know you, you grab on it by mistake or something it could you know move with anchors I think so I I made sure it was on a stud and I went back and just put a couple of those Craig screws in there and it's a the same mounting bracket again it just locks on there and tightens in and we decided to try this type of a uh, paper holder because sometimes those other ones with the little squeeze spring thing in the middle are really hard to get at. And we figured, you know, we're getting older now, so this would be real easy to use. So went back and got everything really leveled up because it will rock a little bit. And then I really cranked down on that one to make sure it wouldn't move again. And you can see we use that Scott towel. Uh, it's supposed to be safest for the septic. And that roll just fits perfect. I don't know if you get one of those bigger rolls I like the Charmin on this holder. And then that last hand towel holder, we decided to mount over on the um, the face by the closet there so it'll be real easy to get at, especially for the grandkids, because we had the old one mounted back on the wall by the toilet and um, it was really hard for them to reach and sometimes they, they'd skip using it just because of that, I think. So decided to mount this out front here and you know see how it works out. I can always move it later if it doesn't work out, but, you know, so it's just perfect size to fit on the, the edge of that uh, closet door framework. So, again, there was a beam there, and I, you know, stud there, and I just uh, used the Craig screws and mounted it to the stud, and then just go back and tighten it up like that. And it's just a perfect fit there. Um, I think it'll be good there easy to grab before you grab the light switch and stuff like that and I did get a couple stainless steel plates to cover those outlets over so basically all the fixtures are you know in place now and the towels did make a lot of difference in the um, echo in the room too and there's my uh, sketch for the vanity that'll be working on next I just figured I'd stop at this point so, you know, it doesn't get too long and uh, bore you to death. And you know, pretty much this is where I'm at now. And um, you're not going to see the next baking video that we started either because something went wrong. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.